let's go. This is the YouTube crypto show with two guys who are kind of in the know. Crypto badges are here, so you're in the clear. No worry or fear, yeah, we're helping you steer. Shouts to the team, we can't forget Max Power and Bazi Dips. Don't get wrecked, a pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto badges. Thanks for joining the Crypto Badgers, two degens that love to do our research. I'm Max Power, joined as always by Matt, aka by Z Dips, and a very well and welcome to you, Matt. Uh, time times are tough out there at the moment, but geez, the bear market doesn't it? Uh, it's character building. Yeah, well, it's not our first rodeo, Max, is it? Uh, uh, certainly, I'm still tarnished by the 2018 bear market, which was absolutely brutal, but. Uh, I think with the goings on of uh, FTX and uh, all the subsequent fallout, I, I do fear that we're sort of heading down that path again. Just almost got a wick down there and get it done. Get to that eighty-five percent down from Bitcoin and go from there. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if it got it over in the hurry, but uh, look, these things tend to play out over weeks and months. So uh, I think yeah, there's going to be some interesting developments this week. But I think uh, yes, a bull market at the moment is still uh, a long way away, as long as sort of as far as I'm concerned. That's right. Um, now, of course, areas that we look at uh, in times like this, we're just look, looking to pick our spots um, for for opportunities in these difficult times, and we've, we've sort of seen these ROI DAPs. Um, they've been sort of in in patches, performing reasonably well in comparison to the rest of the market. Of course, because they are very risky. Um, so we um, we do encourage those out there to, of course, um, subscribe to this channel and. Also, uh, join our, our Telegram with the details below there because uh, we're here through the bear market. We're able to take questions. I think for Degens, we're reasonably uh, risk averse, um, you know, yeah. calculated risks. We tried, Maxie. We, we try. We do try. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think a disclaimer before we get into this, you'll see we've got ArcFire on the screen here, which is obviously the topic of our video today, the first one that we've, we've done on this project. Look, I mean, they, these are not for everyone. There, there is certainly risk um there is certainly no guarantees of returns but we you know we do at the same time like to think we're reasonably selective and and don't go overboards then overboard and look at projects that are not only going to be hopefully profitable but also a bit of a bit of fun along the way and uh, i think what arcfi is trying to do here is take all the lessons from some of these other roi daps um and create a sort of fair mechanism you could say that create some sustainable returns. Um, and so is, is that is that your sort of sense of this project, Matt? Yeah, I think you've really got to look at the history of sort of ROI dApps, really. I mean, going back to sort of bankroll flow, which was really, um, that was BT's project, Bank Teller's project, that, that really paved the way for others to follow. And obviously there's been um, Drip, which was subsequent to that, which was a fork of... Uh, Bankroll flow, um, I guess a new, new, new and improved one. Um, and that's been great, but uh, unfortunately, is sort of uh, incurring a slow death at the minute. But uh, and others followed, sort of Splashive and Piston, and uh, another successful one, uh, Furio, uh, which is still doing quite well, although they've got some issues with utility at the moment. And sort of when I go through Arc Arcfi, I, I sort of see that it's uh, really sort of a combination of all of those things. And yeah, I think I think it's probably. I think what we've got in front of us here is probably a better mousetrap if uh, if uh, that's the right term to use. I think they've really learnt from some of the misgivings of uh, some of these other protocols. And the returns, I mean, these ones range, I suppose, in this case from 0.5% to 2% a day, but, you know, we'll go through how that works in a moment. Uh, they have been going through the pre-sale phase um, over the last couple of weeks. There is still another round of pre-sale to go and it's really been pretty successful so far yeah it's been a monster um the private sale which i think was originally slated to, to take six days yeah there you go november four to ten only took a couple of days uh the first of the public sales literally sold out in a minute one minute uh the public sale two which was the sort of friday just gone uh that sold out in about 10 minutes and then we've got the upcoming public sale three which is uh this coming Friday. So considering the state of the overall market, the fact that they've sold out of these, you know, the private and the public sales so damn quickly, I think what it shows me is that there's still definitely a thirst for these sort of platforms, even when the market is, you know, in the pits. Um, and, you know, it's, it's an interesting one because I've sort of heard people sort of say, you know, these ROI dApps, you know, they're going to all collapse. 
you know, in line with the bear market. But yeah, I, I still think there's going to be an appetite for this sort of stuff. I mean, um, they're fighting against the market. There's no doubt about that. It's not yeah, I mean, these in a bull I, market, but there is still op- some opportunity there in the right spots. Definitely, and and we've been quite lucky with the daps that we've the arrow daps that we've gone into. I mean, obviously, drip um, Fury has been a great one, um, and I think this has got the potential to be another good one as well. And obviously, we've also been looking at uh, the DGEN protocol. We've got a couple of bids on that. If you want to go yeah. out their their token yeah. is actually live at the, at the moment. Um, um, their platform launching probably in around a month or so. Um, but that's another one you can you can check out too. Um, yeah, and I mean it's certainly handy to get into these um, th- these ROI DAPs, you know, as early as possible. It's not essential, but it certainly gets you often a better price, and um, you know, it gets you compounding and, and increasing your bag a bit sooner than others. But there's some mecha- mechanisms which we'll obviously go into with ArcFi that sort of uh, make things more sustainable, and I think are more attractive to uh, users in particular that, that uh, enter a bit later in the phase. That's right. And um, so the, this next pre-sale round, pre, the public sale three, that's sort of slated down for November 25, I think the last yes. few have been 5 p.m. GMT, but do yep. check the telegram for that time. Had to be pretty quick on the trigger. Um, as yeah, you the last few have sold out so quick. So you, you need to be kind of on hand for the launch and probably expect it to, to sell out, I'm guessing, in a, in a similar-ish sort of time frame. Um, and as we'll go into in a moment um, with the tokenomics, it, you know, getting in this pre-sale may be important if you want to get in early just because there's, there's not going to be a hell of a lot of tokens doing the rounds um, at launch. So um, make a note of that date. Obviously, read the white paper, which will which white paper, which will now get into and um really i think what what struck me straight away with the uh white paper matt was the fact that they have gone into a pretty decent amount of detail um on these components which is always assuming that the goalposts don't shift as we have seen in some other roi dabs it does allow you to kind of plan for how how you're going to play it and we will do a video more on our strategy i think we're still kind of refining that ourselves as we learn more about the project. But um, so today's video, I think we, it's good just to go through the white paper. For those of you who have packed, don't have the attention span to read through it all um, or just want uh, clarifications about what it's all about. So, But we might just start with the tokenomics, Matt. And, um, you know, there is um, it is worth noting here that total supply reads is 800,000. Of course, this number can go up in the future if um, once the, if the vault reaches a point We've seen in other sort of ROI dApps, there is a point at, at some stage, most likely, where the vault, which pays out the 2% daily, runs out. At that point, the contract will start minting more tokens, which is not necessarily a case for alarm, but it's always an important um, moment to note. Um, we'll go through some of the taxes and all that sort of stuff, I think, further down the line. But what strikes me in this sort of allocation, Matt, is that um, there's not much... There's not much going to be around in terms of token-wise for people to sell at the outset. No, that's correct, Maxi. Um, basically, any tokens that have been purchased in, in the private sale rounds or the pre-sale rounds, they are all going into the vault. That's an automatic thing. So there's really no tokens at the time of launch to be able to be dumped on the market, um, which I think is a is a really, really good feature. So you could see some some pretty nice price appreciation once the token actually launches. Because here we've got, well, that means this 12 and a half supply, which is in the in the pre, pre, private and pre-sale, that's going straight in the vault. 31% from all these public sale rounds, that's going in the vault. 32 and a half percent, that's just going towards liquidity. So that's not in the hands of early investors ready to sell. 10% going to the team, that's in the vault. And then there's 13.8 percent, which is in the Treasury Reserve at the time of launch. So, I mean, that's probably one where it's not necessarily clear um, could those tokens be in circulation potentially, but it certainly doesn't appear, at least according to the white paper, that that's that that's uh, what their purpose is. So, it is going to be very interesting to see, you know, who would possibly be selling on that opening day. It's hard to see where that comes from. So, one certainly monitor with interest and probably does mean it could be a little dangerous buying on the first couple of days as well. 
Um, yeah, quite possibly, Max. I think, um, and the raise is not monstrous. I mean, between the private sale and the public sale rounds, I think we worked out it was about one point three million, didn't we? I mean, it's yeah. not a crazy amount. Um, so yeah, there's not going to be a lot of tokens whatsoever available on day one. So it's going to be really interesting um, to see where the price might be able to spike to. And eighty three percent of those going into the liquidity as well, which is means we should have something in the realms of sort of. Two million bucks there in, in liquidity. Yeah, for sure. Between the um, tokens themselves and the, uh, the the paired BUSD, yeah, it should be around about the two million mark. Now let's take a look at the vault here. As I mentioned, this is probably the the backbone of the ecosystem here, with earning up to two percent daily. Um, the max paid a three hundred percent, which I think is in line with other ROI DAPs such as Drip, um, which effectively means that once you sort of hit this. 26,000 or the 80,000 in rewards. That is the absolute maximum that you can take from the system. And the 2% up to daily rewards is basically determined by two things that we'll come to in a moment, the net deposit value and also the compound withdrawal ratio, which adds a whole lot of game theory to this particular project. I think what, and the most you can deposit in at the start is 4,000 ARC tokens, which does mean that on a per wallet basis, we you're not going to have any, um, I suppose, massive whales able to generate huge um, balances with 2% at the outset. Um, no, that's correct. That's correct, Max. And, and look, um, really on launch day, um, the most any individual wallet could have if they bought the private sale and all of the pre-sale rounds is probably about five or 600 tokens. That's the most any individual wallet could have on day one. If you want more, you're going to have to buy them on day one and you're going to have to likely pay more for them. And there may be some people who've obviously got multiple wallets, but there's still a yeah, of course. I see, I see, yeah, per wallet, um, yeah. that would be about the maximum, about five or 600. I think we worked out 535 or something after deposit taxes into the vault. Um, so let's take a look at this um, net deposit value first, which is part of this kind of, uh, they call it here, reward throttling. Uh, now, basically the NDV is calculated by measuring your deposits and direct and indirect referral deposits against what you withdraw. So, and what we mean by indirect and direct referral is the amount of other people effectively you onboard into the system under your wallet address. Um, so over time, if you don't deposit fresh capital in the system or you don't bring new people in who deposit, you eventually have that 2% reward reduce. And this basically just incentivizes people to either keep putting more funds into the system or keep bringing others into the project themselves. So um, effectively, if you if you remain positive, if your NDV is positive, you continue to receive the 2% daily. And if it's negative, you receive 1% daily. Um, and of course, and there are there are some some different sort of components to this in terms of what your actions are as well. So people have basically got three options um, every 24 hours and they have to, they have to effectively make a decision. Is that right, Matt? Every 24 hours. Yeah, that's correct, Max. I mean, I think it's a, an EMP money thing, this whole 24 hour timer thing that you've got to actually, you know, make an action, a compound or a claim or whatever um, with, you know, within that 24 hour time frame. just an important thing to note. Cause I think there's been a bit of a misconception out there. Cause a lot of people find this 24 hour thing and having to actually make a manually make a, a compound or a withdrawal or an drop within that, that range. I, I understand that at launch, there's actually going to be an auto compounding claiming function included similar to what I'm assuming we haven't seen it, but I'm assuming it's similar to what Furio have. So I think there's going to be an opportunity to be able to effectively set and forget this. Yeah, um, but of course, you know, set and forget, but at the same time, one can't just compound away here. Um, and that takes us on to the, uh, the compound withdrawal ratio, or the CWR. Don't we love the acronyms, Matt? Um, we love a good acronym, acronym yeah. Matt. Yeah, I love a bit of CWR. <laughs> um, um, and this is all part of these, these kind of, uh, let's call them, I suppose, uh, limitations on behaviors that people can have on the system uh, with the longevity and sustainability of the project in mind. So the NDV, I suppose, is which another fantastic acronym, um, is more about your deposits or referrals that you're bringing in. 
the CWR really talks about and it talks to your activity in terms of compounding and withdrawing. So how often are you compounding versus how money, how often are you taking out? So I think the, the most simple way to put this is that if you if you compound for seven days and you withdraw for seven days over a 14-day period, your sort of CWR is one. Um and there effectively are limits as to what are required to sort of range between that 0.5% and 2%, if I understand that correctly. Would you that be your understanding, Matt? Yeah, that's uh, that's spot on, Maxi. So, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of limitations in the system, which is all designed, of course, to to make the project more sustainable. Yeah. So if if you, for example, are compounding too often, um, you're... Up well, you're not allowed to really. You're not allowed to. So you, <laughs> yeah, you, but the it, system yeah. the system won't allow you to to compound um, more than what the settings are. Yeah, that's the bottom line. So you can try and compound more, but it just won't allow you to, yeah. uh, unless you purchase some of these legacy NFTs, which then grant you an ability to compound more than you claim. Yeah. I guess the other thing with that too, Max, that's worth pointing out um, is there's nothing to stop you. Let's say. Uh, you mentioned about the 1.5 ceiling. So let's say on that, what you've got on the screen there, the 1.33, yeah. which is the max maximum um, CWA you can have if you don't have uh, one of these uh, legacy NFTs. And that's effectively a, a 4.3 compounding claiming structure. Um, so, you know, with that, there's nothing still to stop you from taking those three that you claim each week and redepositing them. Um, which will, you know, obviously then help you uh, prolong your status and keep your two percent for as long as possible. And it will also obviously effectively add, act as a compound, but with just the taxes in mind, which we'll come to in a moment. You wear the taxes, but you still effectively are compounding your principal balance. Yeah, there is a there is a cost to to redeposit, of course. Yeah. Um, so you know, and and the people that have got. Um, legacy NFTs, you know, they don't have to, you know, they're allowed to compound more. So I guess they save a little bit on on taxes, but um, it certainly can still be done uh, redepositing yeah. those claims. And this this table here is um, just sort of outlines what what you're able to do um, in terms of compounding and claiming each week within the various bands that you choose to live. Um, depending on which NFT, you can see obviously the platinum NFT holders they can compound 13 out of 14 days. So I suppose giving you additional flexibility on 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 your strategy that you want to be taking. You might be wondering, well, how do you how are they paying out two percent a day without inflating the token? And like in in some of these other projects, you've got um, a fairly uh, detailed taxation system here that sort of, in general, you would say incentivizes good behavior, penalizes bad behavior. Uh, so there's a table here which kind of goes into all the different taxes that are put on different actions within the system. So obviously, if you if you go to buy the ARC token, I believe you get hit with five uh, percent um, will be taken as a tax on the buy, and then you'll lose also eight percent when you deposit that capital into the vault, making up thirty percent. So if you buy a hundred ARC tokens and want to put them into the vault, you'll end up with eighty-seven ending up in the vault. And you can see here, if you want to sell ARC tokens, there'll be 13% haircut on that. Um, and all of this, you can see it says for these taxes where they end up. And obviously 8% into the ARC vault. That means when these tokens are being sold, that vault is being replenished to help pay out that 2% per day. Um, and then probably one of the most interesting ones that we haven't mentioned yet, Matt, which is going to be particularly important at launch is this dump tax. Um, so any tokens that are bought, any ARC tokens that are bought and not put into the vault, they're going to be hit with a 50% tax. That, so, that's, as, that's as long as that wallet does not have anything in the vault at all. So if, if bots try and come in and, and buy this at launch and try and dump it because the bots won't have anything in the vault – they're going to get hammered because they're going to cop the dump tax of 50% plus the regular 13% sales tax. They're going to get hit with 63%. So yeah. you've got to have something in the vault to be able to avoid that dump tax. 
I mean, 30% going in the bot, if a, if a bot comes in and makes a big buy early on, gets absolutely ripped, it could um, give a serious early top up to. Uh... Yeah, I think the way they've structured it, I, I, I would think bot, bots are going to get wrecked. But uh, this, if they do come in, I think the system's going to really benefit. Um, and then you can see here, obviously, when you compound, you also um, incur a tax on that. So if you. If you've um, so you got your hundred tokens in there, you get your two percent. So your two tokens, um, you'll then effectively have 0.2 out of the your two reward tokens that will then go in part to whoever the um, the wallet is that referred you into the system, and then the other part of that, the other five percent of that, going straight into the Arc Vault. So, and then important to note here as well, I think the the wallet transfer. So if you're thinking about, oh, I've got all these ARC tokens, um, I actually want to spread them around different wallets, just note that you will be hit with a 10% tax if you send those tokens over to another wallet. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you do want to have multiple wallets, you're better off buying them in those individual wallets to start with. That's right. Um, and of course, the other feature, which is often on these ROI DAPs and the DAP systems is a whale tax and I suppose it links to what you were just talking about there, Matt, in terms of having a number of smaller wallets potentially helping you avoid this scenario here where, um, as you can see, as you start to accrue, your principal starts to grow and grow and grow. You'll be hit with bigger taxes. This is obviously to, you know, for the sustainability of the project. Um, and you can see here, once you start getting over 8,000 ARC tokens, the um, the taxes will, in terms of... Um, when you're when you're withdrawing these tokens are going to go up and up. So um, it should, you're certainly better off having multiple wallets. It would appear of four thousand rather than having one wallet of sixteen thousand, for example. Um, yeah, well, you wouldn't be able to have sixteen at the start anyway, because obviously four thousand yeah. is the cap. But um, yeah, I, I think the multi wallet. We'll talk. We'll talk in another video about our strategy wise, but what we're thinking strategy wise. But yeah, I think a multiple wallet strategy makes sense for this one. And now the second main component of this project we talked about was the ARC Foundation, which really acts as the liquidity incentives program. So I think it's important to understand this for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, liquidity is extremely important to these platforms. I mean, you, you need to be able to pay out the rewards and not move the price too much. Um, but secondly, I think it's also important to understand that potentially and I say this because this is just, you know, my read of the, of the white paper. This is where the team could be making a decent portion of their money. I think it's important to, you know, for project um, developers to be incentivized somewhat um, for the project and understand where they're making their money from. And it would appear that um, given that the project will be owning at the start the bulk of the liquidity, you would think that therefore they'll, they'll get the lion's share of these rewards um, early on in the um in the project so effectively what the the how this works is those who wish to um, stake their arc tokens and pair it with busd um they create a pair which they're calling bond and effectively the stake bond value is used to unlock syndicate level rewards and also earn yield and a lot of these yields are, are paid out in busd and um you will have noted on that previous page um, some of the uh, some of the rewards from those taxations are being funneled into the Ark Foundation, and those who have the biggest percentage of liquidity um, will earn more of those BUSD rewards. I mean, the nice part about this is that rewards are paid out in BUSD, which does mean that a portion of the taxes we assume will have to be sold into BUSD to to pay out those rewards. Um, but effectively, this is a it looks like a reasonably standard liquidity incentive yeah. system, um, yep. where if you have a bigger portion of the liquidity, you'll earn more of the rewards coming from the taxation pool. <laughs> the last part of this really is the legacy NFTs. Now, the NFTs effectively have four use cases here, um, which is to unlock the syndicate level rewards, the to raise the CWR limit. So as we talked about earlier in that chart your ability to compound more often um, if you hold certain um, NFTs. Um, you also earn rewards, um, earning a sort of percentage of the fees from the whole ecosystem come through to NFT holders. 
And you also get membership in the Arc Down, which will Arc Dow, which will give you the opportunity to uh, to be able to vote on various um, ecosystem changes or other things that come up in the future. Um, important to note that a wallet can only hold one of these at a time, um, and you cannot transfer these to another wallet until you've reached the max payout. So, yeah, and I think it's important to note um, at this pre-launch stage, there's actually sort of two NFTs that that we sort of need to differentiate between because the private sale and the pre-sale, what you're actually buying is a, is a effectively a pre-sale NFT and they'll be converted at launch to the actual ARC token. So that's a separate animal. The NFTs you buy in the pre-sale are a separate animal altogether to the legacy NFTs, which we're talking about here, which, as you mentioned, give you um, all sorts of rights and abilities um, moving forward after launch. Silver is the most the most common and the cheapest one at $1,000. I think we looked at that. That gives you the ability to, I think, increase your compounding level from a four, a four and three to a five and two. Um, yeah, I think um, I think with these legacy NFTs, I mean, if you're a team builder out there, you have to have a legacy NFT because yeah. you will not benefit from any of your uh, referrals unless you have one. If you're not a team builder, um, the, the benefit of having a legacy NFT is it's going to, as you mentioned, allow you to compound more than you claim or at least give you that option if you choose to do that. So that's really the decision people need to make as to whether they, you know, if their team, if they want a team build, they've definitely got to have a legacy NFT. That just goes without saying. And in terms of team build, this means that if anyone comes into the system under your wallet, of course, we have the, the crypto badges team, which we welcome uh, all to uh, join and with um, the ability to join our telegram and ask questions um, from our own research, not financial advice, of course, Matt, as indicated in our opening song, um but you know as part of that look we effectively the the team owner will receive five percent of all the deposits that get paid and then over time as well the uh, the compounds go go into the um the upper level wallet as well um but it's worth just there is a limit to the levels now matt you're a bit more across levels and what this means but one thing that I only learned recently was that when we're talking about levels, we're talking about 15 levels underneath your wallet. So if I refer you and you refer someone else, that's two levels. Yeah, I think the most popular one's probably going to be the silver uh, legacy yeah. NFT. That one uh, effectively opens up three levels of downline. So yeah. anyone you may refer and two downlines under them. And I think that's probably going to be the most popular one for team builders. Obviously, you can move up to gold and then platinum, uh, which unlock even uh, more rewards as you, you know, obviously you get down to 15. And that number of 15 is 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 something that's very similar across other ROI dApps. I don't think there's... I think a lot of people who are familiar with ROI dApps are going to know this structure pretty well. And just going back a second there, Max, just on the referral side of things, um, no matter what you do, if you want to enter into into ArcFi and and deposit tokens into the into the Arc Vault, you have to have a referral link. There's no way around it. Um, if you don't have a referral link, like the Crypto Badges one, if you put nothing in there. Basically, you, your those the, you know the, the the rewards are going to be going to the Guardian wallet, which is effectively the pro, project wallet, and this is pretty similar to other ROI DApps. So if you don't select the referrer, it just goes straight to the Guardian wallet as by default. So basically, you lose nothing by chucking in the crypto badges one. Well, I'd like to think so, Maxi. Now we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. So yeah, we just and we're good timers. We're just here for a while. <laughs> Um, so a quick look at the roadmap in terms of what's ahead. I mean, I always sort of take these with a pinch of salt and um, I think there are there are still details to come, I would say, on this project. I mean, we haven't uh, we haven't got the audit yet. Um, we haven't got a lot of information about the team as yet, although, Matt, I know that we're quite hopeful of having an interview with um, one of the sort of project leads in one of our upcoming videos. Um, so there's, there is still, you know, there's there's talks of, mobile application, fiat on-ramp, all things that, of course, sound very nice but uh, are difficult to do. And We must acknowledge that, um, you know, these aren't a given, that all this will happen. Um, but certainly, you know, it looks like they're thinking about utility. 
Yeah, it's a it's a crucial thing. I mean, obviously, you know, the way way all these systems work. I mean, I think a lot of a lot of our listeners would be familiar with how ROI DAPs generally work. Um, but yeah, utilities where it's at. So I'm very, very interested to see. And it'd be good if we could get Atlas, who's the team leader, get him um on for an interview, perhaps before launch, and perhaps go through some of their plans for that. But I know they're they're looking at hedge fund and some other bits and bobs um to uh, to provide that utility because really that's the thing that gives these projects legs. And it's sort of the holy grail, really, isn't it? I mean, we've seen with Furio, um, you know, Furbet and other things that they're looking to roll out, but hasn't actually happened. So I think what, whichever ROI DAP can, um, can create true utility, I mean, true utility, outside revenue streams coming into the project, it's going to really extend the life of it. There's no question about that. And the other critical thing as well is community, which is, something that will, you know, I suppose given the incentives for team building and the like, you know, is um, something that's going to be incredibly important to the sustainability. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, now, Matt, when people say to me um, a NASA scientist has done something, <laughs> I sit up and listen. Um, I did, I did, well, I did, Max, back in yeah. July 2021 uh, with Drip. Uh, I listened to the, um, the workings of uh, Kelly, um, who really was the one first one to sort of, well, I think she was the first one, first one I saw anyway, that sort of really articulated the benefit of having multiple wallets and coming out with a calculator that was just so super detailed. And I do thank Kelly for that because it certainly helped to make me a lot of money in the drip drip ecosystem. So Mm -hmm. she's put out a new calculator for ArcFire, I believe. She has. And I just... You know, sometimes, you know, you might think NASA scientists, how can I know if that's true or not? And then I see this spreadsheet and I think... You'd have to be a NASA scientist to come up with a spreadsheet. You may need to be a NASA scientist. So it looks daunting, but once you kind of get your head around it, it's it's actually quite simple. Yeah. So what this... Look, and I think we will probably use this a little more uh, on our next follow up when we talk about strategies and the like, but... Effectively, what you can do in here is just start having a look at, okay, number of wallets, um, how many, um, you know, how many are in each wallet. And then it can, you know, on the basis of what NFT you hold in terms of how often. So, for example, if you have a silver NFT, I think 2.5, wasn't it, for um, yeah. yep. top CWR. So yep. this, is, this is your five and two. What's it going to mean to my balance if I'm doing a five and two? What are the payouts? What's the price? It literally could map out every possible scenario. Yeah, and I, one of the things she because she introduced an updated one, and one of the things um, I like about that is you can add new deposits. See that blank column there on the left hand side, so you can sort of see the impact that adding fresh deposits to your wallet uh, is going to have. And another important column here is is that daily ROI the where you've got the 2% because that basically tells you when you're going to fall from 2% to 1%. And really, other than monstrous team builders who continually got um, fresh deposits coming in, eventually everyone's going to end up back down at 1%. At some stage, you're going to end up back down there. So the idea is, is to try and extend that 2% for as long as you can. And I do like the idea as well for sustain- from sustainability point of view that this system very much relies or, or or incentivizes people to make fresh deposits because you compare it, and I don't mean to talk badly about Furio because I love Furio and I've, I've made a lot of money in Furio, so I think Furio is great. But, I mean, you can compound forever and a day at 2.5% and max out a wallet. Well, you can't do that with this because it would require you to make some fresh deposits either via referrals or via actually putting in new deposits. So... Yeah, I think um, that's a really interesting spreadsheet. It, t- it took me a little bit to get my head around it, but once you do, um, it's it's a really handy tool because you can sort of play around with the figures and and see what sort of impact um, sort of claiming and redepositing and so on and so forth uh, can have on you know your, your daily ROI. That's right. So look, I think the uh, the key things to note uh, to sort of summarise here, Matt, is that we've got the the public sale November twenty five. Um, completely your choice, obviously, if you, if you want to go in. As we did mention, there are not, it could be dangerous buying in the early days, um, just given the limited number of tokens that are on are on sale. Um, so I'm, I'm personally probably leaning towards more the public rather than trying to sort of snipe a, a 
big bag of this on launch? There'll, there'll definitely be people who want a big bag of this on day one. Yeah. Um, I, I think from my point of view, I'll definitely be buying uh, the pre-sale this Friday. Uh, and then I'm just going to see what the price is like on the day of launch. And if it's reasonable, what, what, what is reasonable? If it's under $10, I think the pre-sale three price is $4.75. I think if if we see the token under $10 on day one, I'll probably buy more. If it goes up to $20, $30, I'll probably let it let it just settle. Yeah. But um, I, I, I definitely, I mean, look how quickly these pre-sales have been selling out. So I, I would not be surprised if there's going to be some extreme FOMO on launch day, to be honest. Um, and do encourage you, we'll leave a link as well to the white paper here because it takes reading probably a couple of times to really get Yeah, it does. I mean, it does. But I, look, as you, as you mentioned, it's sort of in the outset. I mean, I think they've learnt from a lot of the other ROI dApps. And I think what they've come up here, I think it's probably the best system I've seen so far in terms of coming up with something that's that's sustainable. Um, and all, all of the dump dump mechanisms and stuff like that, I mean, they're, they're fairly well thought out. Um, so it'd be interesting. It's going to be, yeah, yeah. Do follow us along for the fun ride. Um, and I really, I think the other two just key things to get your head around is that NDV and the CWR. So the NDV, which measures your, your deposits against what you're withdrawing over time. So if you're withdrawing all the time, your rewards go down unless you're bringing in fresh deposits. And the CWR, which is around your comp- how often you're compounding versus how often you're withdrawing. And those two metrics and understanding those are, are kind of pivotal to... Develop. Yeah, and I th- but I think the um, sort of having an auto compounding claiming function, which they have said that they're going to have, is going to take a lot of the guesswork out of this of people. They should be able to just set a strategy and have the system automate it for them. So you're not actually having to, to constantly look at it every single day and panic. Not whether having to bloody sweat out hours in the day, clicking some buttons, <laughs> compound and withdraw, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think that that's important to understand. And then as well, in terms of the the risks, I mean, yes, thing is not audited yet. The, the whole site and platform is not live yet. Um, and the team, we, we don't have any verification at the moment of, of who they are or what they're about. So it's not without risk. It's we're in the middle of a bear market where things are struggling. So important to factor that as well with um, making your own decision. Yeah, very true, Maxi. But uh, yeah, but if people are interested in um, getting into the pre-sale or buying on uh, on launch day, do give a thought to uh, using our referral address. Come into our Telegram. We were, we're happy to have new people in there and um, just to sort of shoot the shit, Maxi. That's right. Answer some questions from people. We're five years in the game now. My God, it feels like twenty five, Max. <laughs> I mean that that two thousand and eighteen bear market. Wow, that one. Uh, that one uh, added some grey hair, let me tell you. But, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, the upcoming bear market or, or the length of this bear market isn't quite as bad, but we shall see. All right. Uh, well, thank you to you, Matt. Uh, I'm Max Power. He is by The Dips. And uh, we will be back very shortly with another video, I'm sure, on this one. We'll be following it along. Do join us in our Telegram. Um, but as per usual, it's 50 Cent to take us out. Cheers, Maxie. Sir, coming live from the crypto world, bringing you all that you need. Let's go. This is the YouTube crypto show with two guys who are kind of in the know. Crypto badges are here, so you're in the clear. No worry or fear, yeah, we're helping you steer. Shouts to the team, we can't forget Max Power and Bazi Dips. Don't get wrecked, a pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto badges.